Hi, this is James from Ballinger Motorsports. Today we ran into a couple of failures with some crimps. We're going to walk through why they are failures and what was at issue. Uh, these are Molex MX150 L housings. This is for an industrial application and we're using 16 gauge wire TXL. Uh, the specifications here, we have a jaw that is for 18 to 22 and another jaw that is for 14 to 16. And so someone chose to use the 18 to 22 jaw on the 16 gauge wire. So we're gonna see why that was problematic. Uh, this is gonna be easiest to see on the microscope. So I'm gonna walk through it here and we'll actually hop over to the video from the microscope hopefully keep the audio for this. All right, so there are several things to see here. We've got a good crimp next to a bad crimp. We'll get focused in here. All right, so we're starting them off at the same location here. So their edges are aligned. And one of the things that you can see is that this terminal is significantly longer than this terminal. And the reason for that is that the over crimp specification in here caused this terminal to elongate. So this isn't a feature you would normally notice if you were looking at it uh, up close in isolation. Uh, it would only pop up if you were looking at these side by side and at, at great detail level. Um, overall, the crimps look good. We've got a bell mouth back here, bell mouth back here. We see copper present at the front. Um, we've got a good crimp zone. You can actually see the indentations of the tool. Here, those indentations don't exist anymore because uh, the material has essentially been squished. Um, it's been over crimped is the bottom line. So here, the reason someone was using the over crimp setting is because they were trying to achieve a proper crimp on the insulation. Um, this insulation is too small here for this insulation crimp. But uh, when they did that, they caused the copper crimp to go into the excessive range. So you wouldn't notice a whole lot here unless you were very experienced. This might look like a good crimp to, to most people. All right, so now we get to the back of these. And on the back of the good crimp, that's what this one is, we can see the indentations here from the tool. And we can see flashing at the edge here. And all of that's acceptable. Um, that's uh, roughly what you want it to look like. Now here, this is your red flag. So right here we've got a zone that is extended and the material has been squished along the side of the die jaw. It's been elongated and severely damaged. This is going to cause this material right here to be very weak. It's going to have sheared off much of its strength. And because of the over crimp, the copper within this zone will be stressed, it will be damaged, and it will be prone to breakage at this joint. The pull strength will be substantially below the good crimp. So some over crimping can be used, but this is well in excess of any standard. And, and this would be available in some charts. I'll put some charts for inspection in the link for this video. But uh, you can see from the side view here that this extends past the bottom of the terminal substantially. And this is, uh, this is a giant red flag. So if you ever see a crimp with a feature like this, that's an instant failure. You should take that out of your batch and you should change your process methodology right away. Um, here is a base terminal. And we can see them side by side. You can see again that this is elongated compared to the uh, normal terminal that is uncrimped here. And you can see the indentations 
that are present in the terminal itself. So that's a quick walkthrough. Um, we'll be able to see here 18 to 22, and 14 to 16, and we can see the different draw sizes down in there. So someone simply used the wrong one trying to get the insulation crimp to spec, but in doing so they damaged the copper crimp, which is not a compromise you ever want to make. It is much easier to work with the insulation crimp after the fact than it is to damage the copper crimp. It can't be repaired. Um, that terminal is lost. It is now uh, junk. So we we have to, we cannot pass this. This was caught in QC and uh, it was failed. And fortunately, none of this left our facility. We have a pretty robust QC process here.